Well, hey, welcome back, everybody. It's Dante at Ferrigno Freedom Channel. It's good to see you again. I have just been so busy working lately this week, and on top of that, we're still trying to get moved into the house, and it's requiring a lot of attention on our part to get little things in place here and there. And we are still so packed into such a small space. It is driving me absolutely crazy. It's been hard to get any recording done. It's been hard to get any exercise done other than the stuff that I do at work. But we are looking forward to getting into, into this house finally after a year and a half of this odyssey. For those of you who have been with me for a long time, I appreciate you sticking around for so long for one. But also, I want to be able to let you know at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek at what we've been doing so you can see that we're finally getting into the house. You know, because sometimes I forget that I was sharing a lot more with you guys than just the carnivore diet. And uh, I want to be able to show you where, where we're at. We're almost there. It won't be long. I'll be doing recording in my own kitchen again instead of recording outside on the patio here all the time. So that's going to be nice. Meanwhile, I got a new video I want to watch with you. It's a short one. It's by somebody I haven't heard of before, but apparently somebody has heard of him, Jesse Chappas. And he's asking, is scurvy slash vitamin C deficiency a concern on carnivore diet with Dr. Sean Baker? So I have heard of Dr. Sean Baker, so I thought, well, it's a short video. Let's see what they got to say. What about vitamin C? Let's talk about a specific vitamin here where we know the human body can't synthesize this and it's something we need to get through the diet. And we know in history that humans who haven't had it have gotten scurvy, which is really serious. So how does somebody like you eating, you know, meat or primarily meat, make sure you're getting vitamin C? Yeah. So there's a lot of thought and we can't say definitively, but we know, we know historically that uh, people that were suffering from scurvy, if they had access to fresh meat, that scurvy went away. We know people that uh, prevented scurvy had access to fresh meat, uh, fresh food in general. You know, we, we, the, the classic example was the limey, right? This, the British sailor that would go on a three or four, six month voyage and they'd get scurvy. And what were they eating? They were eating hardtack, which was basically dried carbohydrate. And, 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 and then they had preserved meat. We know that preserved meat, for whatever reason, doesn't have the essentials that are needed to prevent the, the scurvy, you know? And so when we think about, well, what's going on? Why haven't I gotten scurvy? Why haven't the thousands of other people gotten scurvy? And there's, you know, I saw something with James Blunt talking about how he might've had scurvy 20 years ago when he ate, you know, chicken and mayonnaise and ground beef and beer and felt tired. And his doctor said, well, he must have scurvy. Therefore he has scurvy without any real testing. But um, I think that what we're seeing is, you know, one of the thoughts is we know that, you know, vitamin C does compete with glucose uh, through different shit, tr through different transporters. So there's a gluco glucose and vitamin C are very similar uh, structurally when we look at it, you know, from a, a structure, they share the same transporter for many, from across many membranes, whether it's through the enterocyte, across mitochondrial membranes, um, probably more important than that, uh, we do have the ability to recycle vitamin C. So wow. the human red blood cell can actually upregulate vitamin C recycling. Uh, we know that carnitine, which uh, is one of the one of the functions of vitamin C, is supplied by the diet. Meat is high, high in carnitine, so you're not having to uh, utilize vitamin C for that function. That's probably already one of the, one of its bigger functions. Um, we also know that vitamin C acts as an antioxidant, and one of its that's one of the reasons we have that. Uh, we know that when we go on a low carbohydrate diet. Uh, we see an upregulation of endogenous antioxidants, things like glutathione go up. We also know that uric acid will increase. Most people don't know that uric acid is a antioxidant. Now, most people associate it with gout, and there's that's a different topic, but many people will see elevations in uric acid not getting gout, but it may also take, take off some of the pressure of vitamin C requirements. And then also we know that vitamin C is also responsible for uh, hydroxylation of proline and lysine, which are components that go into building uh, connective tissue, uh, collagen. Uh, we know that we have intact transporters for both hydroxylysine and hydroxyproline within our gut so we can 
uptake those nutrients in their entirety without having to do it through vitamin C. Uh, and so we can get those from our diet. So there's a lot of reasons why we probably don't get scurvy. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's very interesting though, but the, 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 the uh, you know, the, the evidence from the vast, vast majority of people I've seen have not gotten scurvy. Now, if you're worried about it, then you can have some vitamin C. It's not like there's somebody saying, don't eat it. Don't take it. I mean, you want to take a vitamin C supplement, you're welcome to. And there's some people that actually do that. And there's a few people say it's made them feel better. Uh, but in general, I think, you know, we can go back historically and say, well, these people uh, got adequate vitamin C through their diet and it was meat based. Do you personally take any supplements to go along with your diet? Outside of salt, which some people would argue is or is not a supplement. I, gen I don't, I mean, I don't take vitamin supplements. Um, I will, you know, typically when I'm working out hard, if I'm sweating a lot, I'll add some more salt to my, I generally salt the taste of my food. Sometimes I'll take an electrolyte drink if I'm on a train really hard and I anticipate sweating a lot. So, but that's, that's it for me as far as supplements go. Well, that was, that was shorter than I thought it would be. <clears throat> and it didn't really give me a whole lot of opportunity to pause and comment. So I apologize for that. I just wanted to, to address this issue because I get a lot of comments about this, especially from people that I'm talking to in regular daily life. And for the most part, the reason why I say it's not a problem is I haven't had any problems with scurvy. I haven't had any vitamin C deficiencies that I know of. And I haven't taken any vitamin C. So it seems like we get what we need from the meat. But then I saw in the comments on a few people on this video, let me take a look at this. The very first comment that shows up says, I became vitamin C deficient and anemic due to a diet of eating predominantly cooked ground beef only. Ensure you include good quality, rare, uncooked meat cuts. Don't want to put anyone off the approach to nutrition, but do your homework. We tread a thin line with some nutrients. I'm animal-based still, but have to reintroduce some fruit. So some people say they've, they've needed to do more. But I haven't, like I say, two and a half years of eating this way, I haven't had any signs of anything related to scurvy. And just for the heck of it, let's take a look. Symptoms of scurvy. Scurvy is a disease caused by a serious vitamin C deficiency. Not eating, eating enough fruits and vegetables is the main cause of the disease. Left untreated, scurvy can lead to bleeding gums, loosened teeth, and bleeding under your skin. Treatment for the condition includes plenty of vitamin C in your diet, dietary supplements also available. Symptoms of scurvy may start to develop anemia, Swollen or bleeding gums that may become purple and spongy. Loosened teeth that may fall out. Bleeding under your skin or skin hemorrhages. You may develop a scurvy rash that shows up as red or blue spots on your skin. Easily bruised skin. Rough scaly skin. Swollen legs. Opening of previously healed wounds and new wounds that don't heal. Dry brittle hair that coils like a corkscrew. And then it talks about symptoms in babies. Um, I don't have any of that. Now this is, who is this? My, my ClevelandClinic.org. I don't know. I don't know what to think about anything today when it comes to what the medical system says. Because every time I have followed medical advice of health professionals, I've wound up in worse physical shape than I was before. And, you know, I was I was going through my photo album recently. I've been going through all my photos in my computer. I've got close to 10 terabytes of videos and pictures saved. So I was going through and I was organizing my photos and I was deleting blurry ones or things that I don't need anymore. And I was shocked to see the pictures of myself from before. And I thought, and I remember taking some of those pictures and thinking, I'm in decent shape right now. I'm not really heavy right now. And I look at those pictures in retrospect and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I certainly didn't look healthy. There's no doubt about that. I think that's one of the things that's so upsetting about this. When you become a carnivore, you, you begin to feel like you can't trust anything. 
that comes from the medical community. When I read the information about scurvy here online, and it talks about not having enough fruits or vegetables, and I haven't had any in two and a half years, I think, how can that be right? How can that be right? There's got to be more to it. And then I see some people say that there is vitamin C in meat. Some people say there isn't vitamin C in meat. All right, let me throw this back up on the screen. This is an article by uh, Dr. Robert Kiltz, or actually, uh, yeah, this is on Dr. Kiltz's website, but it's an article by Liam McAuliffe, MTS, updated on June 15, 2022. And it's talking about vitamin C on a carnivore diet is one of the most persistent concerns of people interested in this all-meat way of life. However, this concern is based on a mainstream dietary fallacy that meat contains no vitamin C. In fact, when eating a carnivore diet, at least 1,000 grams, 2.2 pounds of fresh muscle meat alone, you will exceed the amount of vitamin C you need to prevent scurvy. There you go. That would have been a lot easier to say, Dr. Baker. <laughs> you can also increase your vitamin C intake on a carnivore diet with the addition of organ meats and seafood. I do eat organ meats, by the way. People ask me all the time, and I have a lot of videos where I'm eating organ meats or I'm eating hamburger meat that has the organs ground in. Let's take a closer look at vitamin C on an all-meat carnivore diet. Why is it not a serious concern for most people, and what can you do to avoid deficiencies? So it goes into the role of vitamin C in the body, and why do people go carnivore in the first place? And then vitamin C on the carnivore diet. So what about the old belief showing that eating meat without plants will lead to vitamin C deficiency and scurvy? As carnivore diet pioneer Dr. Sean Baker, MD, points out, there's a major difference between British sailors eating a diet of carbs and dried meat who exhibited scurvy and modern and ancient carnivore dieters eating fresh meat. Baker reminds us that for over 100 years we have scientifically verified that fresh meat not only prevents but cures scurvy. So Dr. Baker did say that. At least I, because it seemed like he was going on a lot with some things that I wasn't really following too clearly, except for the fact that fresh meat does contain vitamin C. How much vitamin C do I need to prevent scurvy? In the context of a diet high in carbs, you only need 10 milligrams of vitamin C a day to prevent scurvy. It is hypothesized that on a low to zero carb carnivore diet meal plan, it's likely, likely you need even less. And I've heard that before. This is because glucose and vitamin C have a near identical molecular structure and share the same pathways when absorbed into cells. When glucose and vitamin C compete, glucose wins out. And now I follow better what Dr. Baker was saying. I just needed Dr. Kiltz's site to kind of overcome that <laughs> mental block I was having there. According to the USDA, meat flesh contains no vitamin C. However, this is factually incorrect and based on the default practice of the USDA to fill in vitamin C amounts in muscle meat as assumed to be zero. This is an egregious error, considering they test for nearly every other micronutrient. Recent 2007 research published in Meat Science Journal confirms that fresh beef has approximately 1.6 micrograms per gram of vitamin C in grain-fed meat and 2.56 micrograms per gram in grass-fed meat. That's interesting. Another reason to go with grass-fed. Uh, I, I like to get grass-fed when I can. As a matter of fact, I'm picking up a cow in July here soon. So that's going to be nice. I can't wait to get some more of that. Vitamin C in organ meats and in seafood also. Fresh muscle meat alone will more than cover your daily vitamin C needs. You can boost your vitamin C intake on a nose-to-tail carnivore diet with vitamin C and organ meats, including beef pancreas, beef kidney, beef heart, and beef liver. Talks about seafood. Vitamin C and carbs. The idea that a carnivore diet will produce a vitamin C deficiency only makes sense within the context of a high-carb standard American diet. In the context of a low-carb ancestral diet that's better aligned with our physiology, vitamin C deficiency is, is likely not an issue. And let's see here. Consuming carbs. If dairy is on your carnivore food list, you are likely consuming carbs. 
If you're eating a lot of yogurt and cheese, you may be cycling in and out of keto. As we discussed above, the more carbs you eat, the harder it is for your body to absorb vitamin C and the more you will need to consume. That might explain why I had such a difficult time when I experimented with milk. Very interesting stuff. So I think that's the key is when, you, when you're doing a carnivore diet, you know, I've, I've often run into this where people will say, is it okay to have a cheat every once in a while or to eat regular food and do like mostly carnivore? And I think the problem comes in here when you start adding too many carbs. If you're doing a mostly carnivore diet and you're adding those carbs, it could begin to give you some issues with vitamin C deficiency. That's why it's so important if you're going to do this, you, you've got you've to do it the right way. Now, if you're going to consume carbs, you're certainly going to want to boost your vitamin C intake. Interesting. Interesting stuff. It's just one of those things I hadn't really looked into because I'm usually very disciplined about making sure that I only eat the right things. And yet I have, in my experimentation, come across some issues that I, I didn't understand that this might shed some light on. Who knows? I don't know if that was the case or not, but I know I don't have scurvy now, and I know I still feel fantastic. As a matter of fact, I was out in the sun working all day with my son while we were unloading some things to put in the house. You know, for those of you, like I said at the beginning of the video, that wanted to see that, you can stick around and check that out. Uh, but before I show you the house information, I want to show you a quick message from Redmond. Redmond Real Salt is the salt that I use on all of my foods. And I just want to share some information about them because they've been really great to our channel. And I think you'll find that they're some of the best salt products out there on the market, as well as some electrolyte mix and the smoke salts. Oh my gosh, I can't, I just go on and on about the smoke salts. They're wonderful. But then after that quick message from Redmond, I'll have a little video I took earlier today where I kind of take you through my house as we're starting to get it worked out for the first time. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. I know it's been a while since I brought you to this spot. If you've been with me for a while, you might remember the container that we had on this property that we've been storing everything we own in for the past year and a half now. We are finally going to start taking some of it out because our house is almost done. They just got the power turned on today to the house. So that means we pretty much just got to get them to pour the epoxy or whatever it is that they're making the countertops out of and then do the final touches. But I'm going to get a chance to show you today what we've been able to accomplish so far. And you know, I had forgotten that I used to share so much of all the other things going on in my life with you guys, you know, because sometimes I get caught up in one thing or another on the channel, whether it was walking talks or it was talking about food or it was even now doing the reviews. <clears throat> but for those of you who have been with me for such a big part of this ride, I had to come back and share our moving into the house with you because this has been an epic odyssey for us to be living out here, basically camping out for the past year and a half waiting for this house to be finished. And I am so glad that we are getting to the end of this road. It has been nerve-wracking to say the least especially because we were supposed to be done by christmas and then we were supposed to be done by march and then it was supposed to be done by the end of april and then surely it was going to be done by the end of may and here it is june 27th and we're right at the final leg and now my contractor is in the hospital so i'll tell you it's been a comedy of errors but it's also been a, a real learning experience for the family we learned one that we could live in close quarters together without killing each other so that's been great we've been able to live with a lot less than we used to and we found that we could do it 
but we are ready to stretch out into the house that we've been waiting on for so long. But I'm ready to get out some things that they got to hang on the walls in the house before they wrap up putting everything together like the TV that I have and who knows what else. I know we got some things we need to pull out of storage. So my son Luke and I are going to get on top of that right now. Well, welcome in. It's almost done. Almost done. But I figured I'd show you what we got going on. Our kitchen is missing one cabinet door. <laughs> and uh, the wall paint, it looks like, needs to be redone after they did the sink. Man, what happened over there? Oh, this is just, just from the way they trimmed out the, the cabinet. So that just needs to be cleaned off. Nice big sink, I like that. Refrigerator is going to go here, stove is going to go there. Ah, big TV is going up on the wall. We got Levi's room. Just got a, bed, a box spring and a frame in so far. Master bedroom. Starting to look like a master bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> you like our, yeah, what do you call it? Uh, saloon style doors for the, the closets. I figured it was better than having doors hit into each other. This way they can open all the way and never bump into each other. And then the master bathroom is coming together. Coming together. Just a few finishing touches to clean up. We're gonna be there. I can't wait. <laughs> if we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat? <laughs> 